Hey guys, welcome to what I'm calling the 10th installment of my Let's Build series for Ruby on Rails. This playlist is getting pretty long, so if you made it this far, thanks so much for getting this far and following along. It means a lot, and if I can help in any way, as always, there's comments below these videos, so feel free to leave those. You can also check out my blog to see kind of a written format. They're not as thorough as a video of it is, of course, but they are you know, if you need to copy and paste gems or something like that, that's something to think about. This series is going to involve creating a job board and more or less we're just incorporating new ideas and concepts that Rails offers us, which includes sorting. Um, so say we could sort by full time. My server needs to be running, of course. Um, so let me open a new tab, ignore that Docker thing. I'm going to go to my sites. That's a demo job board rails server. I cleared that with command K and then on 3000, I can pull up just all the jobs, the full time jobs. You'll see the little indicator there, the tag part time freelance contract, etc. And you know, that's pretty basic, nothing crazy there, but um, what's cool about this app is I integrated Stripe into the mix. So when you post the job, you're going to need to go and have an, a Stripe account to be able to do so as a developer. So you can enter your credentials or API keys in this case, and then um, use Stripe. There's a Stripe gem we'll be using to integrate into this. We're going to be using Stripe elements, which is just kind of a drop in replacement for payment integration with Stripe, as opposed to Stripe checkout or the traditional Stripe library where you have to fully integrate it. Um, maybe I'll do that one maybe in the future. It's a little more in, in depth, but this one's more or less just the drop in approach, but to post a job, you need of course an account. So I already have one. I'll just sign in as example account. Oop, wrong password there. And you can post a new job, of course. And you'll see we have a, a cool text editor here now too. It's called Tricks. It's made by some of the guys that work at Basecamp, I think. Uh, but anyway, we can tick if it's a remote job, remote friendly, and display the company name and website, have a logo image. And then of course below at the very bottom, we have finally a payment form. So you need to actually complete that to post a new job. And the reason you need an account is to be able to edit and delete your job listing. So that's kind of how this all works. So we can maybe try one here. Let's do web crunch. Um, let's say editor. I don't know. And of course with Stripe, you can enter in fake payment data in the test mode. Currently you'll see in my browser here, I'm in test mode. You actually need to sign up for an account and then just register um, to activate your account to get live token IDs. So you need these keys to actually make these things happen through Stripe. So we'll get into how all that works, but I just want to show you the actual app first. So 42424242, just pretty much keep typing that. The card number matters, these don't. So when you're testing, just think about that. And there's other ones on Stripe if you want to check out the docs. So we create a job. Looks like there's no API provided. Um, I think I have it. I just didn't include it. Let me double check my work here. I use a gem called Figaro to set environment variables. Uh, I'll show you how it works, but basically to run this app from the get go, if say you download it as a vanilla slate, um, you need to install this gem and go to this repo. You basically just need to run this command. It creates an application.yaml file which is right here in our config environment. And then here you can have all your keys. This gets, this doesn't get committed to version control, so it's secure in that regard. Um, so even if I shared this with you guys, you wouldn't see this stuff, um, even though you can now, but this is all test stuff. I'm not really using this, um, but more or less you need the, any environment variables traditionally would live in a secrets YAML file like this. Um, that's kind of part of Rails. You can use whatever you want here. If you want to add those to this file, you certainly can. You just have to render them differently in your app. Uh, where we actually use them in our project here is in the application file when we add a meta tag. 
I know this seems kind of complicated, but it's just so Stripe can connect and do all, all of its stuff. But you see, this is how we put it out here. It's Figaro, which is the gem we're using, and then environment, which says, okay, which environment is it? And then in this case, it's development. So that's why I have this set to development. You can set different ones for production. So if I were to launch this app, I would put in my actual live keys here, as you notice the different naming conventions there for Stripe. So when I did launch that, you can run a different um, Figaro command that says, where's it at? Uh, right here, config, set, whatever. And then you could set, say if you're on Heroku, you can set the um, actual environment to production or development, whatever you want to do all at once. So you don't have to enter in each key for each thing you're using, which can get pretty lengthy. So with all that said, I'm hoping what I just did worked. We might need to restart our server. I'll try that and make sure I save that file. Looks like I did. All right, so Rails server, and I'm hoping it saves my data in the form because it's going to be annoying if not. I'll just hit continue. There we go, it did. Okay, so our job was successful. The payment should have gone through. To verify that and to prove it, uh, you can see in our logs here all the data that was actually submitted. So we have all these parameters that were passed to the form first, which is the actual data in this case. And then we have on top of that our Stripe stuff. So we have token IDs, user um, stuff that I set. It's like extended stuff I threw on the form so I get more information about the user. That stuff I save. So like the visa, the card type, the expiration date and month. Uh, in year and the last four digits, just so the user knows what card they may have used last. That's probably more convenient for people who subs like set up a subscription model. In this case, we're just doing Stripe charges, so it's just a direct one-time payment. Um, so that's something to take into account, but this is kind of setting that preface for that scenario. If you were to do subscriptions, you just need to modify how you charge the customer and Stripe kind of does all the rest of the work for you. So. You see we have all these settings set now, and if we were to go to Stripe, you can see in our payments, one should have just come in, which is uh, right there, yeah. So this one just came in just now. They charged $9 for $300. Um, so we net $291, and this is when it came in. If you wanna verify, we've got the same card data and fingerprint and stuff there. So it ended up working. You can even hook into events with Stripe, which is pretty cool. An app I'm working on hooks into events. If a customer cancels their subscription, they get an email saying, sorry, um, but you can always re set up your subscription, kind of just saying, sorry to see you go, but hopefully you come back kind of thing. So all that stuff you can hook into and do some cool stuff with. So so we should be all set to go in that regard. So our app is working. Um, I'll show you a few other features that I worked on to get this running. The actual applied job process is just a direct link to an actual application the user would enter. It's not built into the app. A lot of job boards do that. And I find that's pretty useful because they end up using a, a third party anyway. So it's up to you if you want to build something that like that into it. Um, it's certainly possible, but we, of course, being an admin, I'm an actual admin with this user role. Let me see if I can do something real quick here. So if I do rails console user equals user dot last. So there's my, oh, okay. So I have two users here. So it says admin false here. If I set that to true, we can have that admin property to be true. And then user.save. And then we updated that user. So if we did user again, you can see that it's true now. All right, so with that done, you should be able to manage pretty much everything. And then oh, I need to run the server. And I can get shown that I'm an admin as well. So now that I think of it, the user that I've used right here, Andy at example.com was the user that used the seeded data. So we actually, like in the last series, used seeded data to just populate the database off, off the start, just to kind of have some. So in DB seeds, I created a new user. That user applies to each of these jobs. So their ID gets used on each. So that's why the controls are there. 
I was confusing myself. So sorry if I'm confusing you. Basically, it's a job board. We've included a Stripe gateway to apply or actually submit a job. You have to actually pay to do so, which is typical. And then to apply, you can apply no matter what uh, for free if you're the person who wants to apply. So one cool thing that I use to kick off this project is a template. So it's an application template. I'll probably talk about that in the very next video, but more or less it saves some time setting things up for us and installs all the gyms that we've done in the past in one felt swoop. So look for that in the very next video.